Did you see that rough golden wheel that always rests atop the gondola, almost like a championship trophy? More than once you stop and wonder how something that, in theory, is nothing more than curdled milk can be worth as much as an entire paycheck. Spoiler alert, that wheel of Parmigiano Reggiano isn't a mere dairy product. It is the culmination of centuries of trial and error, monastic rituals, microbial chemistry, and a terroir so specific that if you move the facility 20 kilometers, you lose the protected designation of origin. Get your palate and imagination ready, because we're going to dissect, grain by grain, the secret life of the King of Cheeses. It all begins on the flat, clay-rich fields of Emilia-Romagna, a stretch of northern Italy crossed by the Po River and blanketed by the dawn mist. Here, roughly 4,000 family dairies operate. Many have been passed down from parents to children for three, four, even five generations. The cows, mainly Holsteins but also Red Reggianas and Brown Swiss, graze on hay, clover, forage corn and alfalfa grown less than 20 kilometers from the barn. This extreme closeness guarantees that the feed arrives fresh and that the soil's microbial flora almost magically travels into the milk. No imported feeds or concentrates. The diet is negotiated with the agricultural calendar and the weather, not the Chicago Board of Trade. This surgical traceability is what allows the Parmigiano to bear the Denominazione di Origine Protetta, DOP, a sort of gastronomic ID card that protects Parmesan from imitators worldwide. Two milkings a day set the pace, one before sunrise and another when the sky is already painted red. The nighttime batch rests all night in gigantic stainless steel vats. During those hours, the lighter cream floats to the top, forming a white cushion. In the morning, the cheesemakers skim off that cream with ladles the size of beet shovels and send it to the butter churn. The remaining milk, semi-skimmed by gravity, is then blended with the freshly milked Dawn batch. The goal is to balance the fat. Too much lipid content would make the wheel soft and chewy, too little, and the interior would lose the granular texture that makes the tyrosine crystals crackle. Now we enter the dairy. The stars of the show are enormous, inverted bell-shaped copper cauldrons, each holding up to 990 liters of this mixture. Copper isn't chosen on a whim, it distributes heat with enviable uniformity and releases ions that trigger nutty and brown butter aromas during aging. The master cheesemaker, armed with a steel ruler that looks like it came from a plumber's toolbox, checks the level and lights a steam burner. Slowly, but surely, the liquid rises to 34 to 35 degrees Celsius, the ideal body temperature to wake the lactic bacteria and get them eager to work. At this point, an act of alchemy occurs. Fermented whey from the previous day is added. Think of it as a liquid sourdough starter. It contains billions of lactobacilli and streptococci that acidify the milk and impart their characteristic perfume. Every dairy cultivates its own microbial pool, a fellowship of invisible critters inherited from the grandparents and adapted over time to the climate, altitude, and even the wood of the shelving. This detail is key. There is no identical batch because the microscopic life varies even between neighboring barns. When the pH drops sufficiently, rennet is introduced, an enzymatic extract from the stomach of milk-fed calves that causes the casein, the major milk protein, to coagulate. In less than 10 minutes, the liquid turns into a massive, semi-transparent gel. That's when the spino, a cylindrical whisk made of steel rods that rotates like a helicopter blade, makes its entrance. It breaks the curd with constant movements until the pieces are the size of rice grains. The smaller they are, the better they dehydrate, and the rougher the final texture will be. The temperature is then raised to 55 degrees Celsius for almost an hour. The grains shrink, expel whey, and become protein pearls. At the end of this thermal dance, all the granules settle to the bottom of the tank, forming a compact ball of 85 to 90 kilograms. The master slides in a wooden ash paddle, ready to surf that viscous mass, wraps the ball in a linen cloth, and with the help of a pulley, lifts it in slow, almost Roman circus style movements. A curved artisanal blade worth about $5,000 slices the mass into two identical halves. Each half moon will become a wheel, hence each vat yields exactly two cheeses. Those two babies rest for a few minutes in plastic drainers to shed the remaining whey, a sweet lactose-rich liquid that, by the way, is repurposed to feed pigs destined for Parma ham. Nothing goes to waste. The local gastronomic ecosystem is circular. When the texture allows, the wheels are transferred to slightly concave stainless steel molds. A plastic band with a thousand raised dots is tightened around each one, embossing the rind with the legend Parmigiano Reggiano, the dairy's registration number, the production month, and even a maturation progress code. 
That tattoo will be vital when, years later, each batch needs to be audited. After 48 hours comes the Salty Spa, a gigantic tank of water saturated with sodium chloride where the wheels float for 20 days. The cheese absorbs salt by osmosis. It's not a mere seasoning, but a biological regulator that hardens the rind, extracts excess moisture, and creates an environment hostile to opportunistic molds. When they emerge from the brine, the exterior is firm while the interior, still tender, pulses with the life of the lactobacilli that will continue to work for years. Then begins the longest, and to some, most poetic phase, aging. The wheels are arranged on firwood shelves that reach almost to the ceilings of the aging rooms. The site is hypnotic, golden walls lined with perfect rows of 40 kilogram discs, numbered like pirate chests. In a medium-sized warehouse, you might find 7,000 wheels, equivalent to nearly 300,000 kilos of cheese and over 20 million euros in market value. It's no coincidence that producers use them as bank collateral. They mature in value over time, not the other way around. Temperature is kept at 18 degrees Celsius and humidity near 80%, parameters controlled by electronic sensors, but also by the master's nose. Literally, the affineur can tell if more ventilation is needed or if there's excess humidity just by breathing. To prevent the rind from cracking or toxic molds from forming, three Roomba-style robots traverse the aisles. They embrace each wheel, turn it, brush it with natural bristles, and return it to its shelf. They do this weekly, 365 days a year, without vacation or raises. When 12 months have passed, the first sensory audit arrives. The master walks the aisles with a short-handled steel hammer. He taps the wheel at various points and listens to the echo. A deep, uniform talk indicates a compact interior. A dull sound reveals cracks or gas bubbles. If it passes, a fine needle corkscrew is used to pierce it. The resulting sample is smelled and tasted. The taster then decides whether the cheese will be sold as mezzano, 12 to 15 months, or continue aging toward the vecchio, stravecchio, or even extra stravecchio ranges. Now comes selling time. The cut is made with almond-shaped knives. Saws are avoided because heat would scorch the edge. Natural cracks are exploited to separate irregular chunks that are then portioned into 150-gram wedges, 1-kilogram blocks, or, for the deep-pocketed, the entire wheel. Pieces are vacuum-sealed or wrapped in micro-perforated wax paper that lets the cheese breathe. Each piece bears a QR code tracing its journey from barn to gondola. The cow's name, diet, milking date, tank pH, batch number, and taster signature. And now, imagine the scene. You arrive home with your wedge, unwrap the film, and the sweet, sharp aroma fills the kitchen. You grate a little over some al dente pasta and hear the crystals crunch between your teeth. In that moment, you're tasting centuries of history distilled into a single bite. It may seem like a luxury, but it is also a monument to human patience and ingenuity. The next time someone says, it's just an expensive cheese, Tell them about happy cows, rebel bacteria, robots turning wheels, and banks that accept cheese as collateral. Only then will they understand that each golden slice is worth its weight in gold, or more.